Michigan is aging, and the population growth rate has been relatively flat over the last decade. Attracting young, talented people to live, work, and play in the Glove State is a major factor in Michigan's growth and future economic health. One way to lure entrepreneurs, new families, and knowledge economy workers to the region is placemaking. Veteran journalist and author John Gallagher has covered placemaking for years. There's general agreement that placemaking involves a, a, a variety of building types and sizes and uses. So you're mixing retail, residential, um, you know, civic uh, entertainment, commercial, um, I mean, almost everything but industrial. Um, there needs to be a variety of transportation options. So you have not, not limited to cars, but including buses, trams, bicycles, bike lanes. Uh, the district needs to be very walkable and a very heavy emphasis on, on what's good for pedestrians. So wider sidewalks, um, a lot of sidewalk cafes. Um, now, you know, really safe intersections where people can cross quite easily, probably some civic space like parks or plazas, uh, and all done up in a very lively, walkable way. So as you said, people can live and work and play uh, within a you know, relatively compact area. Uh, Anika, I'd like to bring you in because I, I think the, the term placemaking and the thought process behind it can be a little elusive for anyone who's not directly familiar with it. So with the work that you do, I'm, I, I would ask if you could just explain a little bit about what the specifics are. What are we talking about when we're talking about what makes a, a good place? What, what are the physical elements that go into that type of planning and um, you know, makes a place attractive for, for someone to want to live? When we think of placemaking, we should be thinking about um, communities where that are amenity rich, that are places where you would want to raise your family, that you can thrive no matter where you are in your life, whether you're a single person, uh, as a single young person or a single older person. Ned, I'd like to bring you in to talk about what creating good places and designing in developing places around those accommodations, what does that do for business? Businesses, especially, um, well, all businesses thrive on, on people. So it could be w people walking by that are customers, or it could be employees that are coming to work uh, in, in, a, in an office location. And in both cases, uh, those folks are looking for the same thing. And I think sometimes we overcomplicate uh, this, you know, we think of it as something that they have in other places that it's in, as Anika said, in Europe or in bigger cities or whatnot. But, you know, placemaking to some extent um, is pretty simple, is, is you know, uh, places that people feel comfortable, that have safety, that have lighting, that have, you know, crosswalks, that have, uh, that are designed with the current residents in mind. Now you say, oh, uh, you know, that will attract other people. Well, well sure, because people want to be around those things. Director of Planning for the Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, Kevin Vitrano, points out that this isn't just a matter of having more cafes and nicer crosswalks. What we need to be thinking about is how are we designing our spaces and our land use, um, regardless of where you are in the region, are our roads and our sidewalks and our transportation networks supporting um, places that people feel comfortable, people feel safe, that are accessible. I think that word has come up a couple times. And accessible is for all ages. We're an aging region, um, we're an aging nation. Um, and that's not anything that's new. We've been thinking about it for a long time, but we have to make sure that our places are accessible, open and equitable for, for all. Although progress is being made all around the state, the debate about how public investment is allocated remains. I can tell you, um, for this for statewide and some of the trends that we're seeing is that we continue to lose uh, younger people, right? Because we're not investing with young people in mind for our urban centers. With losing young people as an economic base, you end up losing your future middle-class working family base, right? And that is regardless of race. We're seeing across the board, younger people are going to school in Michigan and then leaving and finding other places to live. Where does Michigan stand regionally in comparison to Ohio, Illinois, to Wisconsin, these other places that are Midwestern towns and, and states 
that we are in direct competition with. Yeah. Um, well, I think we've lost ground in a lot of ways. Um, our output, our economic output statewide, um, even though it's growing, is growing a lot slower than other cities. We used to be a top 10 state in terms of economic output. Now we're about 13th or so. Uh, we were dead last in some areas. Um, that was a big discussion point up at Mackinac recently. Uh, I, I don't think um, Ohio or Illinois are necessarily better than we are in terms of placemaking. I think uh, I think the modern American urban landscape is is mostly, you know, sprawl land. But I think Michigan really needs to wake up. I mean, in, in terms of educational achievement, we're we're lagging. Um, in terms of amenities for young people, we're lagging. Um, our population is just flat. Um, whereas other, you know, the Sun Belt continues to grow. Since 1990, 1980, 1990, we've dropped in per capita income in Michigan precipitously. We're now down to like 34th uh, in, in the country, whereas we used to be in the low teens. Um, we are relatively a much poorer state uh, than we were 30, 40 years ago. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I will even challenge your premise of how are we competing with Ohio and, and Illinois? Um, the, the answer is John's correct. We're not competing very well with them. They're beating us. Um, but I'd argue that we don't even want to compete with them because, you know, he also correctly pointed out that even Ohio and Illinois aren't, aren't really doing all that well in this area. But other states like Minnesota, uh, or he, I think you mentioned Seattle and Washington and Boston and Massachusetts, those are the states we should be competing with. Um, and they're kicking our butts. So let's just be honest with it. They're moving right up. And, uh, uh, you know, going to what, what Kevin talked about, about the things we need to do these aren't accidents. You know, it's not, it's not like, oops, we, we accidentally made a nicer place. These are investments. They require us to make long-term investments in things like transit and walkability and safety and, um, you know, education and schools. And Michigan's dead last in almost all of that stuff behind Ohio and Illinois, but way behind uh, uh, Washington, Virginia, Colorado, California. You know, a lot of other states are intentionally doing a lot more than us. Um, and if we don't change that, we're going to keep slipping uh, further and further behind. Um, and I think the very first thing we need to do is, is change our mentality of who we're competing with. John, I would like to give you the last word. What is your thought as to what is the low hanging fruit? What should be our main focus? Public transit. Um, you know, we have an appalling lack of public transit. And if you travel to any of the great cities, um, you know, London, Paris, Berlin, uh, New York, Chicago, Washington, uh, you, you know, you can get anywhere on public transit and you don't need a car. And um, that is an economic development tool as well. I mean, that's great for business. It's not just that it's kind of convenient to get around. I mean, it really is, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the stuff that makes the whole society go. So, you know, reliable, safe, um, relatively inexpensive public transit is, is the key.